Hey everyone, so today we're looking at this Ubiquiti Edge Switch, 16 port, 150 watt capable PoE uh, switch. Now the complaint is with um, things plugged into uh, ports on this side, uh, sometimes it will not uh, boot up, it will, it will struggle to boot up and it, the fans, you can hear them surging like it's almost like a power supply is unable to um, start up so been having a bit of a play and I'll show you what I've found at the moment so I'm just gonna plug this in it goes over to this phone IP phone which uses um, PoE so let's plug it into port 1 and you can see it identifies and uh, powers up cool and if we come over to our laptop and we can see port 1 has a lightning bolt symbol in it um, which means it's identified as PoE and you can see here that uh, it's showing the power consumption for port 1 so it's pretty cool pretty cool little um, device and I like the I like the web interface that they provide now I'm going to come down and I'm going to move it from port 1 to port 11. And you can see the phone lights up. Cool. And we come over to here. And port 11 is here. And if we come across to here, it's, it's found. It's got the network speed um, there connection speed but there's no power information so as far as this uh, as far as the firmware is concerned it is not currently supplying power yet there's power coming out of those sockets so it's possible that whatever they use to switch the power through could be shorted which means it's always got power no matter what and that's what I'm thinking initially, and that maybe, maybe because of that, when a device, when it, when it first turns on with um, powered devices on it, it, it causes some sort of overload because it can't figure itself out. The trouble is though, <laughs> while this is definitely a problem, I haven't been able to reproduce the faults so of, it reboots fine at the moment, but that's not to say it won't fail again, and uh, it should... Um, it should be resolved and it might resolve the rebooting fault now you will notice there's two LEDs per port one left one right the one on the right is our connection uh, link link indicator and the one on the left is currently off and according to that it should show as orange for a PoE connection or and green if it's 24 volt so let's just pop that into here and right away it goes orange right away so that's um, oh sorry PoE plus so yeah in the firmware you can choose PoE plus which I guess is um, automatic um, detection and, and, and voltage supply and 24 volt always which is green so it's always yeah always on 24 volt which makes me wonder if these are always, this one's, the, the, the dead ports are always putting out 24 volts, but we'll have to have a look. So let's pull the top off it. So inside the unit, we've got our ports across here. Um, these are our, as far as I can tell just by looking at them, they look like our magnetics, the coupling transformers for uh, the data. And these are fuses, so these things here are fuses. And we've got 16 ports. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 fuses there. So just at a glance, because I highly doubt I'm going to get a schematic for this thing. They're going to be protection for all of the ports. Now I'm not too sure about ports 15 and 16. Hang on, 2, 4, 6, 18, 12 port 15 and 16 there was some mention of 
No, the firmware had a 17, didn't it? So, I think these are the last two. These will be 17 and 18, and that's why it didn't have the PoE option because it's fiber um, there. So, uh, so I reckon we run run down the line and we see. I don't know if power to the ports is um, after the fuse or not. So, you know, does it go through the fuse to the port or does it go through the fuse to some other distribution hardware? So we've got what looks like um, a MOSFET on each side of the fuse there, as well as a diode there, the diode. So it's like diode, MOSFET, fuse, diode, MOSFET, fuse. So I'm not sure how that's all tied together yet. Um, but... Yeah, we appear to have, in that order, diode, MOSFET, fuse, there's replicated all the way along. Uh, we also have these little transistors here. They could very well be turning on the output. I'd say the probably goes through the fuse to the MOSFET and then the MOSFET out to the port, if I had to make a guess. But, in saying that, all of this, um, there's a large plane on here large copper um, section uh, which goes into this side of every MOSFET I'd say this this is going to be probably positive it's connected to all of the MOSFETs so it's likely our positive input this I see there's one two three four of those and one two three four diodes on each one so it's quite possible that this negotiates um, the PoE or not for four of the ports per chip. So that's what I'm thinking. No, uh, no schematics, of course, but just looking at numbers of things and, and how divisible it is, and you can work out what parts are associated with um, just feeding one port. Now I don't know if they're in order, if this is like, this is port 1 or this is port 1, but we'll run down the line and see if we have voltage on every fuse. Um, I do have my laptop connected to port 1, it's not PoE, so uh, it shouldn't be active. So let's run down here and see what we get. So we've got that side of that fuse is uh, nothing. So there should be nothing on both sides, and there is nothing on both sides. What about the this large plane, which I guess is our positive feed? Is that our positive? Let's check on the MOSFET there. Nothing. Well, that's cool. So we have nothing on that side of the MOSFET. What's on the other side? Nothing. So then we wonder, how do they switch these things? <laughs> Let's take some other measurements and see what we can figure out. So there's definitely no voltage here. Let's just make sure we can measure voltage with the ground point that I've chosen. No, I can't. Okay, so the shield around the fiber box is not ground. And neither is the ports. What's going on there? Ah, isolated grounds. Okay, is it, is it a chassis ground? No, chassis not ground. All right, I'm going to have to leave one lead in our power connector in order to get a valid reading. Okay, so back to this power plane. Uh, what have we got? 54 volts. That's pretty cool and rather excessive. <laughs> So, at what point is the regulation happening for 24 volt PoE? We have to ask ourselves, um, and if there's a problem, uh, like a short that's feeding out the, the damaged ports, what if it's feeding 50 volts out there? Just means my devices haven't blown up yet, but they won't be very happy. <laughs> um, so let's check on the fuse on this side. Okay, still nothing on the fuse. Nothing there, nothing there, and the other side of the MOSFET we have 
50 volts as well. Wonder where the gate is. 50 volts there, 50 volts there, 36 there. That, that's probably our gate. Okay, what about this this fuse here? 3.6. Okay, so we've got nothing on that one. 3.6 on that one. Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. I'm just going to run down all the fuses for now. Okay, nothing on any of these. In front of each of these fuses, it's actually marked. I've got V3, V1, V5, V7, V2, V4, V6. So I'm guessing V, the number refers to the port that it's um, probably feeding. So to prove that, I'm just going to plug the phone into um, port five and if we go down to v where's v five three one five so the phone's actually on now do we have voltage on this fuse no we don't okay i wonder how that works because we've got our um 53 on that MOSFET there, and on the other side, 53. So, a couple of measurements later, uh, we have our 50 volts going into the MOSFET, um, and out the other side, then it comes back to this diode beside it, and it comes in this end, which is the anode, so it's passing through the diode into our coupling uh, transformer. But I cannot find a connection between that and the port. So if you jam, jam a lead in there on the pins that should be for power and run the other lead down each side, it does not connect directly through. I'm starting to wonder if because these are seem to be turned on and we've got voltage coming through to here all the time. Um, my next step's going to be to check if there's always voltage on the port, regardless. Maybe there is. Maybe, maybe it then has to communicate once it's powered up. So maybe there's always voltage at the port, no matter what. Um, and we have an issue with the uh, communication uh, with that port. I cannot find a data sheet for this IC, um, because Broadcom are wonderful and only gave it to the manufacturer. I found a basic block diagram of it, and that's about it. And it seems to be digitally controlled. There's communication between that IC and the system. And that IC has a MOSFET inside, which is used to feed um, current through to the network socket. These diodes are actually... Uh, anode on the right so no current is going to flow from here to here but now that I think about it now that I think about it because I wonder if these are paired up as well but uh, I was going to say are they isolated but um, if we have a look at this one Let's say we had the 50, 50 volts going into the bottom of it and it was feeding out to the port. Then it would come out through that diode to this pad. And then we've got two diodes there. Nah. See, that's, that's just funny because they're all joined together anyway. It's not like that would have gone off to that one and that would have gone off to that one and that one to that one. So I'm not too sure what's happening there. What could be happening, actually, if one of these is shorted, if one of these ICs is shorted, that little internal MOSFET, then it's always going to be passing 
um, at least to one of its outputs here, one of these four outputs. Uh, it's always going to be passing through to this plane, which means it's always going to have voltage on there. Even if the other chips are turned off, uh, if one of these was shorted. So maybe that's what we're seeing. So maybe it's done for load sharing. If this is doing one group of four, so this will be doing, what's that? Th three, one, five, and seven. And this one is doing ports two, four, six, and eight. Oh, look at that, one, three, five, seven. So that's one, three, five, seven. This is two, four, six, eight. Then we've got 9, 11, 13, 15, and 10, 12, 14, 16. But this is the IC responsible for ports um, 9, 11, 13, and 15. And it was 11, 12, and 13, which is strange, because that would mean that one as well. But maybe, yeah, as I was saying, maybe it's done for load sharing, even though these diodes end up going all to the same the same plane, they're individually fed from different pins, so if say they're all turned off and then this this switches on for one of the ports and livens up, no, that doesn't make any sense either. That doesn't make any sense either, because why then, why are all the MOSFETs turned on when there's nothing plugged in? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's plug it in and take a measurement from the port, and let's see if there is voltage there before the thing's plugged in. Because obviously the device needs power to be able to communicate what it needs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> sort of a catch-22 just plugged it in you may or may not be able to hear the fans going but I'll just uh, jam into our negative there I don't know if that's isolated from our network power we've got 3.2 volts nothing 3.3 what about that port let's make sure they're all the same and nothing on there so let's just go there to there, inside the port, nothing. So I was kind of right that there is no power. Well at the moment the phone's off so that would also indicate something. <laughs> the system hasn't enabled power out to, out to here yet because it's still booting. We do have 53 volts there. And the other side of the MOSFET says, oh, too late, 53, the phone just turned on. I might just unplug that and see if it's um, off during that initial part of the boot, because I caught it just as it switched on. Do we have our 53 on the input of the MOSFET? We do. And on the output of the MOSFET, nothing. Cool, which would be that side of that diode. Make sure we've got a good connection there. So we have nothing during boot up. Well, it's good. This is the time we find our shorted output, perhaps, because I believe there's actually, is there always power on? No. Ah. So the port that doesn't work has no power on at the moment. So it's not like shorted through to the port like we thought it might be. I'm just watching there to see if we get our voltage. Still got a flashing white light. And there we go, all the ports liven up. However it works, I have, still have no voltage on the ports with nothing connected. <laughs> so, I'm not too sure. It'd be good if I could probe the port that is plugged in. Um, maybe I need to flip the board over and see what's going on on the underside. 
And perhaps first of all, I'll just see if any of these ICs are getting hot. It might indicate a failed one. No, they're all good. They're all good. And these are all fine. Okay. Does the board have any signs of warmth in any one area more than another? No. Okay. Well, other than over there, it's quite warm, but there's stuff going on. I say we flip the board and just double check the underside before we try and figure out any more. So with the screws out, we don't need that connected. It's just the indicator light for the front. Uh, we don't need the fans plugged in or the port on the back. We only need power for any testing that we're doing. Ah, would you look at that. So there we have a row of some more MOSFETs all the way along there. So perhaps uh, while these MOSFETs are perhaps always on, these ones are turned on and off as required. So now we can run down the line there and see what they do. I wonder if they're numbered. Let's just see. Mm. They are not numbered anything relating to a given port. But they should match up to the port they're sitting behind, I would imagine. So let's just do some probing there. And see what comes out. You might be able to see, but there's quite a dark discoloration under the processor. So it certainly runs quite warm when it does run. There are only a couple of little fans. Uh, although you would hope there's enough airflow with the case assembled. So I'll just... Uh, Let's take a measurement and see what's passing through the board and you know, what connects to what. So I will, just for ease of access, we'll go with the top one so I can hold the board up. If we go for the bottom one, it's harder to support the board. So this is port 16 at the very top. We've got our fuse, MOSFET, and diode. And I'm just going to probe on the, uh, the input to the MOSFET there. And we'll just see if it connects through to the other side at all. It doesn't look like it. So the MOSFETs on the other side are not connected to... Uh, that input there. Let's check on the output of the MOSFET. So we've got nothing coming through there. Uh, okay. Um, let's check on the diode because the MOSFET, I should have checked that, the MOSFET goes through a diode and then out to the rest of the circuit. So let's get on the uh, other side of that diode. And go again. No. So we appear not to have a connection at all through to the other side of the board. So I wonder what that whole lot plays. Are they switching ground and positive? Let's see if I probe ground. Um, if I get a connection through to these MOSFETs and I do look at that okay so the larger package the larger package there connects to ground but the other side I'm not too sure where that goes to just yet there is another diode there let's see what connects to what on, on this side so not the SO8 MOSFET, but, hmm, none of those are connected together. So all of one side of the SO8 package are tied together, and what are they tied to? They're all tied together, but they don't 
up here to go they go into the board somewhere <laughs> um, can definitely go into the board somewhere well since we didn't find a connection from the other side the top side through to the ports let's see if we can find a connection from the bottom side to the ports so here's our port this is port uh, one and two the port on top in any sort of stacked port arrangement is um, usually the pins at the back of the port stack and the port on the bottom are usually the ones um, further in uh, closer to the front so if we have a look at port one now the port's upside down but you would um, when looking at it with the plug inserted the wiring would be orange white orange green white blue blue white green brown white brown so your brown and your blue are the plus and minus so let's get on brown there and uh, let's see if any of these connect through to the port so nothing on that MOSFET that's the gate there we go there's a drain and source all right so that's switching through to our that, that pair there and if we go to the blue pair do we have a connection anywhere on the end of this diode we do um, now what's on the end of that diode where does that diode go to so we appear to have a connection for the uh, blue wires on this end of this diode here so wherever that goes off to but that's the um, cathode that's a, that's a cathode of that diode there so looks like it goes off to the other side of the board somewhere pretty sure the brown wires or the two pins at the end are positive uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, positive feed there now continuing on so let's so if that's port one you might think that's port two let's check we have nothing at that one through to port two is this port two no is this port three yes okay port four no port five yes port six nothing port seven eight and if we carry on port eight Port 9, 10, nothing, 11, 12, nothing, 13, and hang on, okay that can't 12 and 13 can't be connected together. 14's not connected. What we've found is I ended up finding that these three are joined together. And that should not be the case. None of those are joined together, so the, none of these should ever be joined together. But these three are. Not that one, not that one, not that one. And all the way down the line is, is okay. So, we have these three that are joined together. They're either all three are shorted or one or two one or two of them are at least so if we check gate 
drain gate source, that one no good. Gate drain okay, gate source okay, drain source shorted. So this one's completely shorted, this one's a drain source short. Gate drain, so that's a gate drain short and a drain source short as well. And a gate source short as well. So, yeah. Looks like we need three of these, so perhaps we need to pop them off and check them out of circuit. Um, I wonder if the drivers are okay. The gate driver looks like they're okay. Little transistor there that'll be turning the gate on and off. And uh, these other MOSFETs in between are okay. Cool. Now we should be in diode mode. We should see a volt drop across the body diode. So that body diode's okay, and that one, and that one. So it's just those three there that seem to be our issue. So I'm going to just put a mark so I know which ones they are. That one, that one, and that one. Cool. Let's remove them and double check out of circuit. I think this board is going to absorb a lot of heat uh, because of the size of it and there's quite a bit of uh, thick copper traces so we'll go in at uh, full steam ahead just let the board warm up a bit first you can see some of the original flux bubbling a bit there so we'll see if we can pluck it off the board one, two, being careful not to knock off the little resistors nearby. Right, there's our three offending MOSFETs, and if we go to uh, diode mode, test, and we will go from gate drain gate source once again now these are a TO 252 package I believe is the number um, also known as a D pack and now gate drain and that's pretty much a short and that too and drain source is definitely shorted um, and you can if you're not sure like just short out gate drain uh, to make sure you haven't got a charge that's turning it on I think you'll find that you're right the first time and it's shorted uh, let's go drain source first on that one that's shorted we don't care about the gate um, yeah. and this one too probably is a drain source short so we wouldn't care about anything else yeah gates not too happy looking either right so Maybe we'll get three of those and let's do a test on the board and just see if there's any shorts present still. No, that looks all right. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing, and nothing, nothing, nothing. Good. So I think we got lucky and that's the only problem. I will just check these diodes um, and in case there was like a bit of a surge that went through so if we compare that to some of the good ones the good ones at that end yeah so they're all the same and like I said before we have the body diodes on here there we go half a volt body diode half a volt there half a volt there and our gate pin is bottom left and we can check Definitely no, no shorts there or there. Cool. In case you're wondering, in this particular model they use, uh, what's on that one? M600 6D. M600 6D for Delta. And that crosses over to, looks like 
uh, QM606D, um, 60 volt and 35 amp, I think it was rated at. So anything that sort of rating would be a uh, okay replacement. I guess what I should do before I get carried away and order them is perhaps take three good ones and move them onto here and then just make sure that the firmware does acknowledge that um, there's a PoE device plugged in and it updates on the uh, management uh, web login and shows an active PoE device. I might just grab it by the body more than by the leg just so that it doesn't have the tendency to want to flick around and um, potential to knock off the smaller components there. Now you just make sure that the bit of flux to make sure that that flows and attaches. I didn't add any new solder to that, we're just doing a quick transplant. Alright, we're booted up, we've got the oh, white light <laughs> and uh, uh, we're all connected up. So I will point you at the uh, terminal. So what are we looking at there? All right, so what you're looking for is uh, here's port 11, 12 and 13. So they are the three that weren't working. So port 11 is there. <laughs> you can choose a setting off or on, whatever. Um, yeah, so port 11, you should see this come up and show power consumption when I plug in device and then that one and that one as well so here we go port 11 there we have it three and a half watts port 12 here we go 3.2 watts and pin uh, port, port 13 here we go that's working absolutely fine so it's just those three parts we'll get them ordered and yeah, it's going to be about a week away before I get those. Not that you'll notice. Old parts. New parts. Oh, now they're a bit mixed up, aren't they? That was silly. Let's wick off the old solder there and uh, ready for the new ones. Load up a bit of fresh solder. Don't need a huge amount on those pads, we'll probably squeeze half of it out anyway. Probably should start at this end so the heat can travel down the board ready for the last one. Less time heating the last one then. Pop the blower speed down to 60 just so it doesn't blow all the flux away and we will just make sure that uh, we have a good connection underneath because it is sitting on the solder but we don't know if it wetted well so we just want to be sure that it did bond with the, the pad on the back of the MOSFET it's liquid cool give it a wiggle make sure we get a bit of flux under it Hold it down. 
and we'll just touch up the uh, two legs on each. And the obligatory cleanup. I wonder who would use the most cotton swabs in the world. Doctors or electronics techs? Doctors probably don't use them at all. There we go, does that look uh, just like new? Now I just have to throw it back together. We know it's going to work because we obviously took working parts and moved them and tested the other ports. Live dangerously. Just put it back together. And turn it on. We have blue light. Keep an eye on that. A bit hard to see, really, without the cover on. What if I just cover that up like that? There we go. Make it more obvious. We have fan spins. And it will take a minute or so to sort itself out. Um, I have my uh, router plugged in here. Uh, and we have my laptop, and I have these were the ports that weren't working. It was a, uh, it was 11, 12, and 13. Those three there weren't working, um, which we moved the parts from the last three over, and we know they're working. We have new parts in the last three ports because I didn't switch the parts back, so we'll test those ones. Fans stop. Our light is blinking in white, and that should go solid white when it's ready. Um, I've got a ping running at the moment. Um, there is no connection to the laptop yet. All right, we have contact. I will grab the cable to my phone and I will take the DC power off the phone because that will just be pointless, wouldn't it? Um, here's the phone. We should see it sort of light up from that angle. Now we want to go into port 16. We'll try that one first. That's looking promising so far. Phone lights up and we have the uh, link link light, is it? That one? Or that's just the, that's, sorry, that's the PoE light, wasn't it? I forget they had the different lights um, printed on the front of the case there. Uh, so it's um, PoE plus is active, orange light. Uh, yep, looking good. It's got the lightning bolt in the icon and if we scroll down here we go, port 16, PoE, 3.6 watts, all right, let's go down the list, we want to get to port, um, say we go to port 10, because we know the rest of them work, so here we go, 15, and 15, right away with a value, 14, there we go, 13, hot and ready, 12, on it, 11, there we go, and 10, fantastic. Let's plug some non-PoE stuff into those ports and make sure it boots up. Of course the problem was that stuff that uh, is not a PoE device uh, was not operating as it should. So what have I got that's not PoE? <laughs> um, other than, well I've got my laptop I suppose, I can sacrifice that. It's a piece of junk anyway. I'll stick, uh, I'll stick the laptop into 16, I'll stick the printer into uh, 11, I'm sure that'll work fine. Uh, laptop is still functioning, uh, so I need to reboot this, it had its main difficulty during boot, but yeah, who knows. Power off. Count to 10. You should always count to 10 when rebooting electronics. Power on. 
Now the phone is not yet on. It does think about things before it livens up any devices. We're into the white flashing light cycle. One of the first routering type devices I've seen where the fans actually turn off. And the phone just came on. And it's not complaining at all. I just want to try something. Um, I know you can configure these ports to be um, uh, 24 volt all the time instead of PoE plus. So I'm just going to do that. I'm curious as to what happens. Um, no, it's updating the power. So we go 24 volt and OK. And what happens? OK, link status of the port you're changing needs to be down before you can set it. Interesting. OK, I didn't read that right. Here we go, port offline, and we'll go 24, OK. Now I wonder if that makes it permanently 24. The green lights come on the port, and yes, a quick measure with the multimeter says there is permanent power on that port. So be careful with that setting, and maybe that's what killed this, is having those ports activated with um, non-compliant hardware plugged in. I plugged the uh, plug this camera back in and it did switch on. I wonder if it'll give us a power reading. It may not. Well the camera is definitely functioning all right. No no indication of what sort of power it's using so clearly 24 is a non-intelligent um, here we go there's our data. Uh, 24 volts a non-intelligent monitoring of the port just always on cool i wonder if it'll let you go back with it plugged in oh it does there you go it deactivates the port and then decides what to do with it well there we go job done well thanks guys for watching that video i hope you found it interesting and uh, maybe helps you if you have a poe active switch of any sort you know they're all similar similar function i'd imagine We'll catch you all in the next one.